Hey, this is part 2 of my little video series where I make a fully playable Half-Life 2 level from scratch, improvising the whole design from start to finish and talking you through the entire creative process. In the first video, I show you how I designed the whole level in text first, so if you haven't seen that already, you might want to go and check it out. But in this video, we're going to take that plan and start building it in the Hammer level editor. I'm going to show and explain what I do at every step of the way, while fast forwarding the boring bits to keep the video nice and tight. I also explain what I think of as the skateboard first approach, and why I think that's the smart way to approach this project and lots of projects in general. So let's get moving and switch to the editor. For anyone not familiar with Hammer, it's the level editor that Valve used to make games like Half-Life 2, Portal and Left 4 Dead, and it comes free with all of those games. Not only that, but they include a lot of the editor files for real levels from the games, so you can open these up and see exactly what real levels in this game look like, and how they put everything together. So if you're trying to learn this stuff, it's super useful. But let's open up a new map and start making something, because I want to show you as quickly as possible what it's like to make something in the editor, and then jump into the game and test it. The bits where I'm actually building the level, like now, I'm going to speed up a lot and talk over it. To keep these videos nice and tight, and focus on the creative process rather than technical stuff. So far I've just made a box for the pillar to start in, with the ceiling of that box set to render as sky. I've put a player start in there, and I'm also adding a pistol, a zombie and a combined metro police guy. And finally I'm just adding a directional skylight, so that the sky texture will cast light from above. And I want to test this right now, so I'm going to press F9 to bring up this run map window, all the settings look fine, so I'll press OK, and it builds super fast because the level's tiny. But this is Half-Life 2 now, and this should load up the level we've just made. And it should start immediately because the zombie guy will spot the combine guy and start attacking. The combine guy will react by pulling out his gun, and let's see who wins the fight. Go on. Oh, zombie wins. Right. Oh, headcrab! Oh! Oh, now I've run out of ammo as well, so it's gonna kill me. Alright, you get the idea. I'm now gonna be chased down and killed by this headcrab. There we go, we're dead. <laughs> so that's our first bit of Half-Life 2 gameplay that we've made. Game of the Year stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. Now let's go back to the plan that we made in text in the previous video. At the beginning of the first video, I talked about uh, the theme of escaping the Combine, as the one piece of direction that I would take while improvising everything else. And then by the end of the video, I had this list of events in the sequence section. This is basically the plan for the level written in a bullet point list kind of format. But what I ended up with here is probably much longer than we need, because the goal is to only create maybe three or five minutes of gameplay, and my rough guess is that this might be closer to 10 minutes. So I'm going to consider some of these ideas optional, like using zombies and headcrabs, or having AI civilians to rescue and fight alongside. But with this set of ideas and general plan in mind, now the question is, what's the smartest way for us to start building this level? Well, the player starts in a cell, and we know that from this cell, um, a notable decision I made in the last one, is that I thought it would be cool if, from the very first room, the player spots a potential escape vehicle somewhere maybe outside through the window. So the fact that we can see the end of the level essentially from the first room of the level seems like a very useful place to start. So let's switch back to the editor and change that big room we've made into the start room for this level. So we'll start by deleting these enemies that we don't need anymore and we need to change that ceiling that was previously a sky back to being a ceiling. So this is me zipping through the textures. I'm going to use real textures rather than these kind of orange and grey development textures um, because I think it's fine to use kind of vaguely representative textures at this point so long as, crucially, um, we keep things really simple and rough so that we're changing things really fast to test things out and iterate on things as quickly as possible. Now that I've applied some wall textures to these walls, you can immediately see that the room we were in was actually two stories high. This is a nice little example of what I've talked about in other videos, uh, about how easy it is to accidentally make things way too big in the early stages of making a level, and how it's good to keep an eye on this now so that it doesn't run us into huge problems later. Having said that, seeing the two floors like that made me realise that it's probably cooler if the player is up on the second or third floor, while the escape vehicle they can see outside is on the ground floor. 
This just inherently makes the level less flat and more interesting, and gives us a natural journey for the level, where the player has to figure out how to get down to the ground floor to then escape in the vehicle. Now that this room is nice and small, I'm taking one of the walls and basically adding a large window into it. This is going to be the window that shows the player the outside area with the escape vehicle in. I'm going to speed this up even more now uh, while I build the outside area that you can see from the start room. Like I said, I'm doing everything really quick and dirty, so I'm really just kind of duplicating the walls from the room to create these outer walls for the outside area. I'm changing the wall textures to a kind of brick and uh, I changed the floor texture to a grass texture. I've changed the ceiling texture to a sky. Here I've just split those very tall outer walls in two so that I can make the top half of them sky. I'm also adding a pistol to the room that the player starts in and a zombie to the area outside. Okay, so now we have the start room. It has the player in it. I've added a light so the room isn't so dark. I've changed the sky setting so that the lighting will be a bit better. But let's test this out. Oh, I don't know what that is. Some funky uh, Z fighting of some kind. But uh, there we go, we can see outside, kind of a strange looking sky. And uh, we can pick up the pistol that we've got there, take a pop at this zombie, drop down from the window, and take it out. So technically, this is already a level where you start in a cell, you find a way to break out, and then you escape, and you've finished the level. The obvious problem being that it is super short, super simple, and kind of rubbish. So where do we go now? What are the next steps? Well, let's switch back to Hammer and specifically the top down view of the level. So far we have this start room at the top and this escape room at the bottom, which is outside and this window that you can jump through to get there. Now let me take a screenshot of this that I can scribble on top of. Okay, cool. So like I said, we start in this top room up here and below we have the basically the end of the level where you would eventually escape to to kind of jump into this escape vehicle. This is a car, believe it or not, that I'm drawing now. And there's a window in the middle that you can currently jump through because there's no glass stopping you. And so you jump out of the start room through the window and into the outdoor section, which is basically currently the end of the level. So I did this thing kind of intuitively but deliberately in the first video where we planned this level out. I like the idea that you can essentially see the escape vehicle and the end goal from the cell that you're trapped in at the very beginning of the level. Apart from being a nice way to set up a high level goal for the player intuitively from the start of the level, another reason I liked this idea was because I knew that it would enable us to build the level in the way that we have, where we literally make the first room and the last room of the level right at the start. From here, we could add a little door to this room here, and maybe a vent that the player can escape the room through here, and basically build out the rest of the building like this. It could curve around like this, and then we could extend the outdoor section to match it, and have a big door that connects the two, and then the level is about escaping that cell, fighting through the building, and getting outside, and then fighting your way to the escape vehicle, at which point we could bust through some kind of barrier of some kind, and finish the level on the other side. And as I said in the first video, what's good about this, both this theme and this layout, which starts with the beginning and the end of the level being next to each other, is that all of this extra area that we're now talking about building to flesh out the level, this can be as big or small or simple and complex as we want and as we have time for. So we can start with it being super short and simple and just keep adding ideas and complexity to it as we go along until we feel like it's either finished or we run out of time. This brings me on to something which I think of as the skateboard approach, which I'd like to take a couple of minutes to explain to you now because I just think it's such a useful concept. This comes from a guy called Henrik Nieberg, who was talking about agile design and production processes in companies like Spotify. So to explain my take on what this diagram is about, imagine we need to create a mode of transport and we come up with this design for a car. If we were to take the top approach, then we would only think about the final product in its most ambitious form, and we'd try and make this final product from the very start of the process. As you can see in steps 1, 2 and 3, what this leads to is a process where we don't have a functional car that you can drive in any way until the very end of the process. Which first of all is stressful because you spend the entire process with something that basically doesn't work. 
And secondly, it's just really inefficient and leads to a lower quality final result. Because if you can't test that product while you're making it, then the final version of that product will essentially be the first version. And to put it mildly, the first version of anything is never any good. Generally speaking, the way to achieve quality is through iteration. So in contrast to that, the bottom approach suggests that instead of focusing on trying to deliver the super fully featured awesome car from day one, we could instead focus on the goal of delivering a mode of transport and start by making a skateboard instead. And then we could turn that skateboard into a scooter and we could turn that scooter into a bike and we could turn that bike into a motorbike. And then we could use all of the stuff we've learned through all of those stages to turn the motorbike into the fully featured awesome car. And what this means is that we have a working version of something that fulfills the goal that we're trying to achieve from the very first stage and throughout the entire process. So speaking really practically, as I make this video series, I don't know how long this level will take me or how many parts there will be because I'm improvising the whole thing. This type of level design does take a lot of time and I don't know if we'll ever get to the super fancy fully featured car version of this level. In fact, I don't think that's what this video series is going to be about because I want this to be about process and not polish. But one thing I do know if we work in this way is that even if I got hit by a bus tomorrow and heroically uploaded this video while waiting for the ambulance to arrive, then even just after this video, I know that we'll finish with some kind of skateboard or scooter version of this level, as opposed to just being stuck in the lurch with something that doesn't really work. So at every stage, we're going to take whatever we have at the moment and expand and iterate on it according to whatever feels the most important to do next. So let's start sketching this out and thinking about what the lowest hanging fruit are at this point. What are the easiest and most important things we can do to make this level feel more complete? First of all, one easy thing would be to actually add that escape vehicle into the exterior section. So we'll make sure to do that. Let me think, we, we talked about having a door here and then with probably a guard on the other side. Guard guy, let's say so you can see him from the door. The player doesn't have any weapons, so they don't have any way of getting their attention or kind of making any noise. Um, we talked about a vent over here. I'm trying to imagine, like, if imagine somehow we get into that vent, we could crawl into the vent, go around a corner and end up kind of in that room somehow. And we don't want it to be, we don't want the player to get into that vent before they look through the door, for example. So we want this vent to be a bit, at least have some kind of thing that makes it, you know, so the player has to kind of think or do something to get to access this vent. So maybe, the first idea that springs to mind that I hope would work is if this vent is kind of raised up off the floor so it's it's too high for the player to reach. It's open but it's too high. And maybe there's, I don't know, there's crates, good old crates. Let's try this for, to begin with. Um, there's two of them. And maybe the player can just pick up a crate and uh, put it there, oh, sorry, against the wall. And, uh, you know, jump onto the crate and um, you know, climb through this vent. That's one of the puzzles in, at the start of Half-Life 2. You move crates and use it, jump on top of them to jump out of a window. I assume the metrics are such that you must be able to jump on top of them. We'll figure that out. So I want to go down a vent. I want to turn a corner. Maybe, uh, let me think. I don't know, maybe there could be a section where you can actually see into the room. So imagine the room is something like this and the vent could go down here. But here is a kind of a window bit in the vent where you can see that way into the room. We'll see if that works. But I like the idea of peeking into the room before you can actually drop in. So you, you get this build up to you kind of entering the room. And then this is where you could actually enter the room somehow. Um, okay, and then so let me think. The player is still unarmed at this point, so we'd need to them to have some kind of weapon. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a desk here that the player can conveniently drop down behind and there's a crowbar on the desk, as you do. They've stolen, they've taken God, Gordon's crowbar and they've left it outside. Um, and you can retrieve it and smack him over the head. Um, what else? Let me think. So we talked about extending this area. This is still the ground floor. The player is at least up on the second floor. That's currently where they are. So that means 
we'd want a doorway here. I and mean, this, just to get this a really simple version of this done, um, you know, this doorway here could lead to a room with a staircase. Amazing drawing here. And, um, and then in the bottom of this room, there is a door that we have to open here. And then the player gets out, they fight their way. Oh yeah. So that means we would add enemies here. And that's kind of cool. Cause that means that when the player starts the level, they can look out of the window and see a little scene of some combine guys around the vehicle. This would have to be the weapons room we talked about. So maybe in there, there's some weapons, you know, that's, that's a terrible drawing of a gun. But we now have a rough sketch of a design that expands, kind of fleshes out the middle part of the level in a way that draws from a bunch of the key ideas we came up with in text in the first video. Let's just check which ideas we took and which ones are still on the table. So level starts with player in a cell, obviously we've got that. Player spots a potential vehicle, uh, escape vehicle outside through a window. Player can see a guard through a hole in the door to their cell. Player escapes through vents. Uh, when we don't have a choice on where to go when you're in the vents, but that can come later. We do have a bit of scouting the location out from the vents. We don't have captured AI civilians. We don't have the dark room. Oh, and we don't have Gordon's suit, which would be nice to get in there um, because that gives the player the UI and shows their health and lets them sprint and stuff. And it will be quick to get in there as well. So let's do that when we switch back. Um, no zombies or headcrabs for now. No crossbow or gravity gun. Uh, we could throw that in in the weapons room. Yeah, all the dark room stuff we're not doing yet. Big final fight in shoes, fighting towards the vehicle player can jump in the vehicle and then we need to add some kind of, well, <laughs> ideally a ramp and some barrier or something to smash through as we speed away and finish the level. But you can see how we've taken about half of the ideas from this sequence and kind of integrated it into our first iteration and kind of expansion of the middle part of this map. This is me adding the window in the first room, the barrier we smash through to finish the level and Gordon's suit to the level. So now let's switch back to Hammer and start actually trying to build this thing. Because designing it in a little 2D scribble is one thing, but I'm sure some interesting challenges will come up when it comes to actually designing this in 3D and testing it out. So this is what we have at the moment. Uh, I'm going to bring up an image of the sketch that we did. And oh yeah, we said we would add the escape vehicle to the outside area because that's a key element of the level which we don't represent at the moment. And that means making an exit for the level too. This should be quite fun actually. So if I add an entity there, change it into yeah, prop vehicle Jeep and the world model should be car, buggy, buggy. There we go. <laughs> so hopefully this will be good fun. We'll just jump in and we'll build this right now. Okay, there we go. We've got a buggy and let's just try and sneak into the buggy. <laughs> We're in. So now we can drive this buggy around and try and run this zombie over. There we go, we got it. So we can see how that is going to be pretty fun. In fact, I'm tempted now, it's really tempting now to make the level feature more of the Jeep because the Jeep is so much fun. It would be a shame to jump in the Jeep and for the level to suddenly finish. But for now, now that we've got that Jeep in, I think the next priority is just to make this outdoor area bigger. This is to create more space to drive the Jeep around in and also more space for the battle that you have on the way to the Jeep. As you can see, I'm doing this in a fairly basic way and not putting too much thought into the specifics yet. I just want a bigger area to drive the Jeep in and a little corridor to drive down. That feels like it could be at the end of the level. We're still in the really early phases of just sketching in the initial beats of the level. Starting to build this section was quite kind of fun and exciting for me because I've never used the vehicles in Half-Life 2 before. And I think getting to the vehicle is a great kind of motivating goal for the player at the start of the level. Okay, let's jump in and test this again. <laughs> so that looks a bit weird, but that's fine. I'll, I'll set them off just so I think it's a bit more interesting. There we go. Now we get in the Jeep. 
Have some of that. Uh, so even now, uh, after I've made this area bigger, it still feels really small. Once you're driving in this Jeep, it's so fast. But uh, we can say that's the end of the level. And now the idea of getting to the end of the level feels way more exciting, because we have this payoff of escaping in the Jeep. Back in the editor, another good next step would be to block this window so that the player actually has to escape the building properly. This took a bit of faffing around uh, with me remembering which glass textures are actually transparent, because a lot of them are not. But uh, this one is, and it doesn't look too bad. So after a bit of tweaking, let's jump into the game and test. There we go. So now the player cannot break out of this building. The glass bullet holes look quite good too. So now the player really is trapped in this room and this building, and we need to make it interesting for them to get out. So let's go back to the sketch of the building that we're trying to escape. I suppose the first thing is that we need, now the player is trapped in this first room, we need to give them a way to get out. And obviously we need them to be able to escape, go through this room, down the stairs, and then to outside. So let's just make a really quick, rough version of being able to escape that room, going downstairs and outside of the building. Uh, we're starting by cutting holes in that wall to create the doorway and the little vent that we're going to escape through. There's two crates to jump onto to climb into that vent. Duplicating walls from the existing rooms to create the next big room that you kind of drop down into from the vent. Starting to block out the next room after that, which has the staircase down to the ground floor. Here I'm placing a railing mesh into the level. The reason I'm doing this, even though the railing isn't that important functionally, is that just putting that mesh in tells me the exact scale um, of a real staircase in Half-Life 2, basically. So it's to help me keep both my scales and angles correct because it needs to look right and the staircase can't be too steep or flat or big or small. Lots of little fiddly bits to fix at this point. Uh, there's still walls with the sky texture on, which is obviously crazy. Fixing doorways, connections between interior walls and exterior walls. Um, loads of little fiddly bits that come up as you're building this quickly. Here I'm placing a shotgun on the floor, just so that the player has a good weapon for the fight towards the escape vehicle at the end of the level. Building on the steps of the staircase, Again, doing this in the simplest, most functional way possible. For the real thing, you would build out all the steps in separate brushes, but I really don't want to spend a lot of time on details that aren't important yet and are likely to change. Now I'm fixing a bunch of the textures. Uh, the walls that still have the sky texture on. I've made the upper floor all wooden uh, floor, and the ground one is still concrete. Found another hole at the top of this room, sealing this up. Placing a combine guy in this room with his back turned, standing in front of a table which has a crowbar on it for you to grab and then sneak up on him. Here I'm cutting out the doors and adding real interactive doors, uh, which look like that. And this reveals that the doorways I cut out are the wrong size, so I'm fixing those. And at this point, I think we're ready to test. So let's jump into Half-Life 2 and see if I've made a complete mess. I'm expecting things, at least some of these things, to not work. Because that's quite a lot of stuff I just did, and I did it all really quickly. And I'm bound to have some kind of metric stuff that doesn't add up. Okay, so you can see out the side. Um, can we see the guy? We shouldn't have the pistol in here, so that's the first mistake. Oh. No combine guy in there for some reason. Let's see if we can pick up these boxes. Well, first of all, let's see what this hole looks like without the boxes. Now let's see if we can jump on these boxes. Is it easy to get into this hole? Nope, it is not. Let's see if this is even possible. 
So this is a classic example of the kind of problems you find the first time you test your work. So now to get out of here, I will enable cheats and use no clip. So yeah, for some reason, uh, the combine guy is not there. And there's a weird shadow under the table. I don't know what that's about. Um, so the combine guy's not there. Oh, and that means... I forgot to lock that door as well, so I could have just... <laughs> I could have just exited the room through that door. I forgot to add a light to this room so it's super dark. And because we don't have Gordon's suit, um, we can't use the flashlight. So there are problems, but we're still technically escaping this very poorly secured building. Making our way to the escape vehicle, shooting the zombies on the way. And escape in the most gratuitously violent way possible. Boom. All right, so switching back to the editor, the first thing to do is just to fix a bunch of the simple little issues that we found there. One thing was that this combine guy wasn't spawning for some reason. And when I checked the entity settings, it was displaying the settings for a different entity type. So if something was screwed there. I fixed it by just deleting him and creating a new one. Other stuff included this first door not being locked, which I just fixed there. Um, I'm going to make this vent easier to jump into, so I've got rid of the top bit and lowered the bottom bit. Duplicating this light to light up the next room. And noticing while I do that, that this room is completely missing its ceiling. So I'm duplicating the floor and dragging it up to create a ceiling. What else? Outside I had the idea of adding some combine guys who, like in our very first test, will kind of systemically start a fight with the zombies as soon as the level starts. I thought this was a good idea, A, just to get some representation of the combine guys waiting outside for the final fight, but also because that initial systemic fight between the two factions will draw the player's attention to the window and to the escape vehicle at the start of the level. Now I'm just moving the shotgun up onto a table so there's more chance that the player will see it, and we're going to test again. And yeah, that works quite well because you can hear the gunfire outside and it immediately makes you want to see what's happening. And they're having a little fight. Oh, the combined soldier guy seems to be T-posing weirdly. Not sure what's going on there, to be honest. But there's an interesting little scene that plays out dynamically and it draws our attention to the window and to the vehicle. And now they're just... Uh... Oh, they're walking towards us, which is pretty cool. That's quite a change in a lot of value that we just got from adding two combined soldiers to the start of the level. Okay, on to the rest of the level. Um, now this door should be locked. Yep. And now, now there is uh, a combined guy there. Although it's hard to see, so I should probably move him. This is lower now, but hopefully still too high. Yep. To jump into without the box. Let's see if this works now. Bit noisy there. Oh, it's uh, it's still a nightmare to jump through. So I'm gonna use no clip again to fly through the wall. Oh, <laughs> he moved really fast. Oh, and now this guy's spotted me. And, oh. So I'm not sure if that guy spotted me because of the noise I made when I shoved the crate against the wall, but obviously I don't want that to keep happening when we continue to iterate on the level. Figuring out how to deal with these kind of AI quirks and basically to craft the experience that you're trying to create. It's another reason why making levels for existing games with full AI enemies and stuff is just a whole different ball game to making empty environments for a player to flow through. Oh, that's a railing prop we placed here, it just doesn't seem to be here. Not sure why. It's cool because you can hear the zombies kind of just bumbling around outside. I'll pick up the shotgun. We technically have a little fight on the way out, um, and now we can escape it again. I've already got some ideas about how we could really flesh out this final section with the Jeep, but I think we'll save that for the next video. Okay, I think we're getting close to the point where we can think of this as our skateboard version of the level. So let's just try and nail down some final fixes before we wrap this up. Let's see. Uh, the lock door was locked, but we couldn't quite see this guy uh, through the lock door, so we'll move him. 
There we go, that should be easier to see now. Uh, this was a complete disaster. I think it was because this 32 unit um, hole that we're trying to squeeze into is just too small. I think Gordon Freeman, the player character in Half-Life 2, is just wider than that <laughs> and just can't fit through that hole. So we're going to make it bigger and that, I suspect, will fix this problem. We had the weird thing where we used no clip to kind of zoom through this room accidentally and when we came back in, the guy was kind of alerted to us. So I hope this won't be the case after we've built out this vent properly and the player crawls through it like they should. I don't know how tall Garden is, so we'll make this really tall just to make sure that the player doesn't get stuck on it again. And now I'm just tweaking things so that the player has a good view of the situation from inside the vent. Okay, let's see if that works. And then what else did we encounter? We came out here, the railing wasn't there for some reason. I don't know why that would be, but we'll not worry about that for now. This room looked weird being double height like that, so I've just duplicated the ceiling and brought it down. And I think the last bit's fine for now, uh, just getting to the vehicle and driving away through the zombies. Maybe we should uh, check our text file, our initial design, and see if there's anything we've missed that would be a good thing to just throw in. Oh yeah, garden suit, that's, uh, that's worth throwing in. So for now, we'll just place it far too conveniently in the player's path on the way out of the building, just so it's in there. All right, let's give this a test and try and wrap things up, see if we're See if we'd be happy saying that this is our skateboard version of the level. Alright, combine guys still glitching a bunch. They're gonna lose the fight like they did last time. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can... Oh, that guy's looking in this direction. And I, I shouldn't have a gun either. But, um, so I gotta delete this gun next time. But let's see if we can at least get in here now now we can so maybe oh okay so this i now we've spotted the problem this vent is too thin because i can get here but i can't get into the vent let's jump out again and fix this right now so i'm just making the whole vent the same width as the gap that we can now get through and here's the pistol that we keep forgetting to delete and also while we're here i'm going to create a block line of sight volume over this door so that the guard on the other side is never kind of alerted by us looking through the doorway because there isn't really a case where we want that to happen. So let's test these fixes. Okay. Or maybe he can hear the gunshots outside. Or maybe he can hear the sound but not see me. That's why he's still turning around a lot. Now we can finally fit in the vent. And hopefully this guy hasn't seen us. We can spy on him nicely there, it goes really dark here. I should add some kind of light. Let's see if we can drop down here without him hearing us. Yep, oh, what's going on there? Oh, the vent's really low, so we've got to fix that. But uh, there we go. Now we've kind of successfully snuck into this room and we can batter this guy before he gets a shot on us. Nice, okay, so that kind of works. It's, it needs lighting, but that kind of works. Still no railing. Maybe there could be a little encounter here. But generally, this feels like a good blueprint for where we're gonna go in this series now. Everything's simple and placeholder, but I can totally see where we're gonna go with this when we iterate on it. And I think we've learned a lot along the way. So I'm pretty happy calling this our skateboard version of the level. So we'll wrap up this video here for now. And hopefully I will see you in the next one where we will take stock of where we're at or think about what we've learned and really start to flesh out the level in terms of getting proper kind of interesting gameplay and combat in there, drawing on more ideas from our initial design and text and also a few ideas that have sprung to mind while making this video. I hope you're enjoying the way we're approaching this and where it's going. Let me know in the comments and see you in part three. Cheers.